Hello there, welcome to my brand new Let's Play. My name is Andy and here we are starting Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. First person shooter survival horror game developed by GSC Game World back in 2007. Uh, I'm playing the GOG version, which is version 1.0006, uh, but I have added the Zone Reclamation Project mod, uh, which is a bit of a community bug fix program. Which apparently makes the game a lot more playable, fix a lot of the major bugs in the game without changing how the game plays. So it's still quite vanilla. And I like my games to be as vanilla as possible as long as they're playable. Now, I'm looking forward to this game, probably like a lot of people at the moment. I've just finished watching the. What was it? The. Oh, HBO series, that's right. In Australia, it's on Foxtel, but it's produced by HBO. The Chernobyl mini series, uh, which is very, very good. And it's obviously tweaked my interest to get in the whole Chernobyl incident, and thus we come to Stalker, a game all about Chernobyl. Uh, I don't want to hang around in the menu too long. I do want to get the game started, but just a little background for this game. I remember reading about it, or oh, probably back in the early 2000s, in one of my computer magazines I was subscribed to back in the day, before the internet was a common thing, at least for gaming news. I saw the first announcements for, Chern uh, for Stalker. And I was pretty excited. I saw those first videos that came out, especially showing the physics models, and I was super hyped. I bought the game, I think, on day one, but for some reason, it just did not really now, connect with me straight away. I didn't really enjoy the game for the first time. I tried again a few years later, and I still couldn't quite get the game to really click. Um, I think it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, and it wasn't really as RPGs I thought it was going to be, I think. But I'm ready to give it another shot. So I've never actually finished this game. I've played it. I don't know how far I've even got into it, but never finished it. Let's hope I can do that today. So let's go ahead and start a new game. And there'll be a bit of an intro video to the current story, then we'll get into it. So let's uh, watch that video now. I will play on veteran difficulty. So it seems to be the one above the halfway line. I don't like playing anything lower than half, so let's go veteran. seems to be alive. What a lucky guy. At least death would have saved him from the dreams. Let's go and see what value Sidorovich will put on your head. What have you got? A body. It came from the death truck. It's got the mark. Well, you know the drill. Leave him on this the... This is a live one. Bullshit. You are lying. 
Let the zone take me if I am. Put it here. I think for this one, I can give you. So, Mark One, I saved you, and I'm not going to pretend I did it to win favors upstairs. You do some jobs for me, and we're even. Besides, keeping you busy might be a good way to deal with your amnesia. And I'll see what I can find out about your problem. I don't give a shit why you want to find this Strelik guy. I mind my own business. If you want to kill him, well, you must have your reasons. Ah, oh, so this is the start of the game. What are you standing there for? Come closer. I don't bite. I gotta speak to Sidorovich first before I can go any further. The door behind me is locked. This is my main contact at the start of the game. He's gonna give me a bit of a tutorial. The what's choice happening. is yours. Either I brainwash you like I usually do with other rookies, or I treat you like a real stalker and I give you a mission straight away. It's been a while, so I'm gonna say check me like a rookie, but I don't remember crap. This is your personal PDA. This useful device will help you survive in the zone. And if you do die, others will know where and how. <laughs> Just kidding. Here, let me remind you how to use it. Your tasks can be found in the first section of the PDA. Most tasks have buttons which allow you to access additional information on the task. Remember, each new task is automatically shown on your minimap. Moving on. The second section on the PDA is the map. Buttons above the map allow you to zoom in and out. Um, oh, you, you can also center the map on yourself, and uh, what else? Uh, I'm sure you'll work it out. It's not very complicated. The PDA also has a contact section. The contact section contains a list of stalkers within 50 meters of you. You can see a brief description, rank, group allegiance, and probable attitude towards you here. Remember that while you're neutral, the way other stalkers feel towards you depends on you alone. Note how someone's attitude towards you changes when you help them. Be careful if enemies are around. They're marked red on the visor. Friends are green and neutrals are yellow. Oh, and PDAs of dead stalkers are grey. Helps if you're into looting corpses. What else? Oh yeah, there's a diary too. Well, uh, what is there to say about it? All the information you need is noted in your journal. And news too. Even what I'm telling you right now can be found in this section. And then there's a rating section. You can see the top 20 stalkers I know. I refresh this info from time to time to keep up the competitive spirit. <laughs> Maybe you'll be at the top of this list someday. Who knows? Your own achievements are noted in the stats section. It's pretty much self-explanatory. And then we have the encyclopedia. It contains information about the zone and survival advice which you find or are given by other stalkers. That's basically it, I think. Oh, one more thing. Your PDA model has a wide-frequency radio wave scanner with an inbuilt decoder. Its radius of operation is about 400 meters, so you can even intercept military comms. Mine has a working radius of 30 kilometers, so I can always get in touch with you. I'll give you the tasks and the latest news. Initially, I'll give you advice, too. So, is everything clear, or should I repeat? Alright, there's a little tutorial from Sidorovich. Let's actually get this quest or this mission going. Got a job for you, Marked One. I want you to find a stalker called Nimble. He was carrying some very important information. He disappeared somewhere near the bridge. Find him. Dead or alive, I don't care. I need the flash drive with the info. Visit Wolf from the local camp and ask him. He certainly knows where that guy can be. Go on. 
Sidorovich says that's all for now. Bring me the flash drive and we'll consider the fact that you've partially paid me for saving you. So we've got a new task. To get information from the scout, we've got to talk to Wolf. Now I'll do some trading with Sidorovich, but I've got... I've got 40 rubles. Um, and everything seems to be quite expensive, so I'm not really going to buy anything right now, am I? Right. Ah, man, dog food is more valuable than this. Uh, I'll try. Yeah, I know I was talking about this door was... Huh. Nothing in there. They're both locked. I think I already searched that and that was empty. Alright, let's go out into the world. Good hunting, stalker. Alright, so here we are, out into the world. Here we a few little pop hints on the screen. that will just tell me some basics about controlling the character. This is the first little local camp. They put away the guns if they're not going to be a threat to you, which is good. I won't search anything just yet. I doubt there's anything here, but let's uh, speak to this guy. This is Wolf, the one that Sidorovich mentioned. So we'll chat to him about this mission he wants me to do. Wolf says, hi, why are you here? I say, hi, I need to see Nimble. Would you know where I could find him? Wolf says, Nimble got a raw deal. His group was attacked by some bandits a little, a little ways from here. All they could do was send me an SOS message. It looked like his powers went under. My guys told me these bastards are now at the old car park, the one across the road. I say, you don't rescue your own people from prison. Not what I'd call friendly, or is it that you're just too weak to do it? Wolf says, I'd bop you one, but what's the use? It's not that simple. I've got too few people. And even those I got are mostly rookies. I can't take that risk. If we lose this camp, things will get even worse for all the stalkers out there. And what about yourself? If you aren't too scared, I won't let my pride make me say no to a helping hand. So, will you help me deal with these slugs? I say, hey, noisy over there, aren't they? I say, think I could do it alone? Wolf says, nah, you'd stand no chance on your own. My scouts are good soldiers, and right now, they're right behind those freaks. Together, you can make a run for it. What do you think? You got the guts? I could help you with a gun. I say, I'll try. Guys, I'm sending someone your way, so wing it. You may attack if necessary. Over. All right, Wolf, send him in. As long as he stays out of the way. Out. Alright, so the map is showing me the way to go, in that general direction. And Wolf kindly gave me a gun. He gave me a PMM, which has very low accuracy, very low damage, and a very low rate of fire. Good handling though, and 40 rounds. Now, I'm going to try and keep every episode in this game to roughly 20 minutes, 25 minutes, give or take. That's going to be my goal, like I do with my EU4 games. Now, obviously, some episodes might go a bit longer. Bit of free pack. Some games might go longer. Now, some episodes might be shorter. I'm going to try, try and keep it that if I can. Yeah, some episodes probably will end abruptly, say so it's a really long mission or a long exploration. I'm not really keeping track of time, or I'm not sure how long it's going to take. What's this? Barricaded. Yeah, if it's... so uh, some might end abruptly. Let me just see how the game goes. I'm not really... Because it's a bit of an open world game, and you know, there's no levels, there's no set start and finishes like other games. Yeah, there's got to be something in here at least. The place is barricaded. Let me just see what happens. Even that, I thought. Oh. I'm gonna explore this little. Town first. Is there anything is here? Uh, but I'm not getting too hopeful. You can imagine these guys would take anything of value already. Uh, 
I'm intentionally not pulling my gun out because it does anger the locals apparently. If you walk around with a gun flashing about, um, people around can get angry. And I guess you can kind of see why. Even though they're great little hiding spots for loot. Let's see him going for that. Like, take a bolt out. Послушайте, мужики. It's down here, like a little bunker. Ooh. Some bread, energy drink. <laughs> Some food in there. Okay. I'm hearing gunfire. I got warned then by Wolf. He was pointing his gun at me. What is that gunfire? <laughs> no one here seems overly fast by it, do they? My map, which Sidorich showed me, uh, indicates there is something down there, maybe like a guard post or something. That could be where, that seems to be where this noise is coming from, that could be where the uh, fighting is. Maybe there's a enemy over there that they're controlling. Yeah, a stash but nothing in it. This goes against everything that most games are about. Most games, you find a stash, there's loot inside. Not this one. A few drinks though. And some vodka. I think the vodka is good for uh, dealing with any radiation that you might suffer. I think that's one of the reasons why. This game kind of felt weird when I first played it back in the day, it's because the normal rules of gaming didn't seem to apply. Where if you search something, you always get rewarded. In this, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get rewarded just because you're searching. And it kind of, it's kind of cool in a way, in hindsight, I can appreciate it more. It's like, yeah, this is a... Oh, there's some food. Like, yeah, so it's an abandoned zone, but it's still... People have been entering here, looting stuff for years, so... I'm not guaranteed to find things. I think that's kind of an anomaly, though. Can't quite see over there. Let's just search this building. I guess I'm finding bits and pieces. It's probably technically stealing. Yeah, they always mentioned secure area. So maybe they're guarding the uh, the checkpoint. Perhaps that's what this noise is. I'm going to try and take this game reasonably slow. It's not like you do 3Ds or your Dooms. I'm going to try and immerse myself into this world a bit. Try and really explore the nooks and crannies. It might not always be the most thrilling gameplay to watch, especially when I'm just walking around empty buildings. Uh, but I'm hoping I'll get rewarded for doing so. I'm hoping that little things will happen or I'll find little things that will make you really appreciate. Let me appreciate the game and the world that they've created. Okay. Well, that's this place searched out, so I'm guessing it's time to go on my little mission to find Nimble. 
the boss. Nothing seems to be in the bus. Is it? Hmm. Not. You might get a view of what this place is from up here. Oh yeah, there's a check. There's something over there. Red. Okay, so these guys are red, so that must mean the enemies. And they'll probably shoot me on sight, I have to imagine. So I'm not going to get too close to that. My mission is over this way, but I might leave it here. It's over there, I'm too sure. Might leave it here. And that will be my intro mission, well, intro video of Stalker. So not much really happening, it's all set in the scene, it's all getting familiar with the character in the world. Next episode, I'll go out there and actually do this mission with Wolf. And there's something over here as well. What's that? It's finding. I'm too sure. Oh, what's that? That's an anomaly, I think. And I heard some grumbling noise. There's another one. You no, know, there's some weird stuff out there. Alright, guys, thank you so much for putting up my first episode. I promise next time. Ah, uh, some more will happen. Yeah, okay.